Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to church. My name is Paul Carr and I'm the rector at Emmanuel Church here in Billericay. It's uh, really good to have you with us. It's um, Sunday the 23rd of August and it's also the 23rd service we have shared either live or pre-recorded since lockdown began. So just a little quirky fact uh, there for you today and I know some of you do like quirky facts. I hope you're all keeping well and like me have been able to enjoy some uh, time away or have a break uh, of some kind. We all need just to take time out, have a Sabbath rest uh, in the busyness of life and even if you've not been too busy uh, having a break is certainly all that we need. I've enjoyed uh, being away uh, with Paula and also with my family. Very pleased to say that this morning we have a guest speaker. Uh, Bishop Wallace Ben, former Bishop of Lewis, uh, will be speaking on Who Do You Say I Am? from the uh, Gospel Lectionary reading from Matthew uh, 16. And uh, I know many of you have uh, really enjoyed our uh, virtual acts of worship uh, as the weeks have gone by. I know some of you just like to sit uh, and watch and listen, others of you join in singing wholeheartedly. Uh, be sure to keep your windows closed if you do and we have some great songs this morning and uh, I'm sure that as we worship together God by his spirit will will strengthen our faith uh, draw us closer to him but strengthen the fellowship of the unity that we have as the family of the church and so our first hymn this morning is Jesus is King and I will extol him
That may be a, an unfamiliar hymn to some of you, but it's what you call one of the old classics. It's a hymn that reminds us of who Jesus is. You know, Saviour, crucified, risen, ascended, interceder. All that we need can be found in him. And certainly I'm sure that will be echoed uh, in our service as we go through this morning. As you're probably aware, there are no service sheets in August, uh, but the prayers that we are using will be on the screen. So will you join with me as we pray together? We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. And let's just bow our heads as we continue to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that your spirit uh, continues to move amongst your people and that though we may be separated uh, in so many different ways across this town, across this nation, Father, you want to build your church how uh, to be strong in faith and to be strong in their witness and to be strong in their understanding of your plans and purposes for our lives. So, Father, we pray your blessing on each one of us this morning and all that we share together. But, Father, we pray particularly for those who perhaps are not able to be with us at this time this morning, perhaps those who are working, uh, those who are unwell, perhaps those who don't have internet access, those who are travelling, Father, wherever they are, whatever circumstance they may find themselves, we pray your blessing on them. May they be aware of our thoughts and our, of our prayers. But most of all, Father, uh, would you just be with us and bless us as we spend this time together. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So we're going to continue with uh, uh, two songs. Uh, the first one is Come People of the Risen King. And that reminds us that we are uh, we're not Good Friday people, we are Easter Sunday people. And that makes such a difference in our lives and in our faith. And that will be followed by a, a wonderful hymn, um, All My Dears, Beautiful Saviour. Certain 
This morning's reading was taken from Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. Jesus went to the territory near the town of Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Some say John the Baptist, they answered. Others say Elijah, or others say Jeremiah or some other prophet. What about you? he asked them. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus. For this truth did not come to you from any human being, but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation I will build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
What you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then Jesus ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, my name is Wallace Ben, and I'm a vice president of Church Society. And it's a pleasure and a privilege to be with you this morning to share God's word with you. Uh, please would you turn with me to a really important chapter, and that's Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at the beginning of a, a real turning point in the gospel story uh, from verse 13 until verse 20. There are lots of questions around at the moment. When will there be a vaccine? When will I be able to hug somebody that I love and I miss seeing? Uh, when will we be able to get back to normal? Will we ever get back to normal? And so the questions go on. Uh, but this passage really is about an even more important question. In fact, the most important question that could be asked. Uh, Jesus asks it at Caesarea Philippi, and he asks it in two forms. First, as a general question, uh, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Verse 13. And then in a more specific way to the disciples, who do you say that I am? In other words, Jesus is saying, what do people make of me? He's asking the disciples, in the light of the experience they have of the, the crowds of people gathering around Jesus to, to listen to his teaching in the way that he taught like nobody else, um, and to see the amazing miracles that he did. He's asking disciples, what is it that people think about me? Who do people think that I am? The, uh, the disciples answer that the response to Jesus is largely positive, uh, apart from the opposition of the scribes and the Pharisees, that is, but largely positive. Uh, but people are saying in verse 14, some say, is John the Baptist come back again? Some others say, is Elijah, great prophet of the Old Testament, or Jeremiah likewise, or another one of the prophets come again? And then Jesus says, well, that's okay. Uh, I understand that that may be uh, their reaction. Uh, but what do you think of me? Who do you think that I am? That's a very pointed question. And Jesus answers, uh, or rather Peter answers, the pointed question of Jesus in verse 16. He says, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Peter, the spokesman for the disciples so often, um, says that he and the others had come to see that Jesus was the long-promised Messiah, promised by God throughout the Old Testament, the, the promised coming king who would deliver his people. And when this king would come, God would be present among his people. Peter says on behalf of the disciples, we've come to see that you are the Messiah, the promised special one from God who brings God's presence to us. And secondly, you're more than that. You're the son of the living God. There's, we acknowledge there is a special relationship between you, Jesus, and uh, God the Father. Uh, you are the son of the living God. And compared to all the uh, false religions and false messiahs around. You are the son of the living God, the one true God, in a unique relationship with, with God. Uh, Jesus reacts to what Peter says and says in verse 17, uh, you're blessed. It's one of the, the other ex, extra beatitudes of Jesus. Uh, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Uh, you. You didn't discover this by your own reasoning or your own goodness or virtue. 
but actually God has revealed it to you, and what you're saying is true. And then he goes on to say in verse 18, I tell you, Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, Jesus is saying to Peter, look, uh, the name Peter means a stone or a, or a rock. Uh, you're, you're the rock man. And on this rock, this huge boulder, this Gibraltar of your confession, I will build my church. Um, John Chrysostom, one of the greatest preachers of the early church, uh, said that Jesus meant when he said, on this rock I will build my church. That is, he said, on the faith of his confession. When people come to see who Jesus really is and acknowledge him as the Son of God and the Savior of the world, the God-sent Messiah, it's, it's a life-changing uh, transformation. And it's something that builds the church. Because when people come to see who Jesus is, and we'll see later on, when they come to understand what he came to do for them and acknowledge that, they join the church of Jesus Christ. They become a disciple of Jesus. And so they build the church. And so it was Peter's confession um, of who Jesus was that was the very building block of the church. And Jesus goes on to say, um, in verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. If you look on to chapter 18 and verse 18, you will see that wasn't just given to Peter as a gift, but to the other disciples as well. And Luke explains in Luke 24, 47, that it's by the preaching of the gospel that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed and people are to come into a relationship with God. It is the declaring of the gospel and the response to that that either uh, uh, causes people to be saved or lost. Uh, also in Matthew 18, um, that uh, gift of binding or loosing through the declaration of the gospel is applied uh, by Jesus to church disciplinary matters where church leaders apply the teaching of the gospel and the word of God into a disciplinary situation. And uh, if they're doing that faithfully, that decision stands. So um, Peter is indeed is a significant uh, player in the early church. He's the natural uh, leader of the band, but it's his confession is the key thing. Uh, notice where this confession by Peter takes place. It takes place in Caesarea Philippi. Philip the Tetrarch, the nominal ruler of that area of the country, had um, built a uh, renamed and rebuilt uh, part of what was called in the uh, more ancient uh, world Panias. And re he renamed the, the town Caesarea Philippi uh, to keep in with the emperor. He named it Caesarea and after himself Philippi. Uh, but it was uh, a famous multi-faith uh, worship center. It had had uh, worship of Baal in previous generations. It had a temple to Pan, the Greek, the pagan Greek god. And... Um, it had all sorts of multi-faith worship. Um, some 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee on the Mount of, uh, just on the base of Mount Hermon, the largest mountain in the Holy Land, it was at this place that Peter made a significant confession of who Jesus was. And uh, the significance of that was not lost on Peter ever. Later we read in Acts 4 verse 12, he says this, There is salvation in no one else but the Lord Jesus, for there is no other name given amongst men by which we must be saved. Uh, you see, this confession of faith in a multi-faith situation 
um, we're being taught this by the Lord Jesus. Whatever people uh, think about me or whatever other faiths may say or not, there is only one way to God. And that is through the Lord Jesus, his unique son. Uh, Jesus elsewhere said, I am the way, the truth, and the, li and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. The significance of this statement is that however much we respect other faiths, and we ought to, and fight for their rights, uh, we ultimately want to say politely but clearly and faithfully that uh, all other faiths are cul-de-sacs in terms of a relationship with God, a saving relationship with God. Um, but the way to find a relationship with God is through his unique son who came to open the possibility of that relationship for us. It's not enough to think of Jesus as a good man. It's not enough to think of him as a great prophet like Islam thinks. It's not enough to think he was a, God, a very godly, saintly man who teaches us wonderful ethics. No, he is much more than that. He is the son of God and the savior of the world. Uh, Peter's confession uh, on behalf of himself and I think the other disciples was a turning point for him and for them. And so it should be for us. If Jesus was to stand here physically amongst us, as he does by his spirit, and ask us the question, who do you say that I am? What would be your response from your heart? The right answer to that question is life-changing. May God grant that we may join with Jesus, not only with um, Peter, but with the other disciples down the ages, and all of us acknowledge from our hearts who Jesus really is. He is the Messiah the King of Kings. He is the Son of the Living God.
Good morning. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus Christ, you say to us, who do you say I am? And we say, you are the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lamb of God, the bright morning star, our great Redeemer, and we praise you this morning. Lord, you are always at work in our lives, calling, guiding, speaking and responding. Everyone is important to you, no matter who they are. Each has a place in your purpose. And so then we pray for those in our world who don't know that. For all those who search for a meaning to their lives, a sense of direction, a goal to strive for, and for those seeking their worth and pleasure in the material. May they find in Jesus the way, the truth and the life, and we lift them before you. And Lord, we know only too well that knowing you does not exempt us from drifting. None of us are blind to the temptations that this world offers us. So help us, Lord, to stay close to you and to serve you and you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, you are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace, and your love is for all. No one is outside your care or beyond your grace. And so we pray for all in our world today who long for love and a safe place to live. Those who have been abandoned or orphaned as children. Those who are separated from family due to war or the trauma of bereavement. Those who have been forcibly misplaced. Those making perilous journeys, fleeing from conflict and persecution. And in particular, Lord, we pray for children travelling in extremely dangerous conditions. Bless those who work to bring them relief and encourage generosity and compassion in all our hearts. We ask you to inspire the nations of the world to tackle the root causes of war and the migrant and refugee crisis. And we look forward to that day when all will rejoice in your kingdom of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are faithful and true, the light of the world, our healer and our comforter. And we ask you to protect us from the spread of the coronavirus. You are powerful and merciful, so may we take refuge in the shadow of your wings until this disaster has passed. We remember those living in coronavirus hotspots and those currently in isolation. May they know your presence in their isolation, your peace in their turmoil and your patience in their waiting. We pray for strength and resilience for all those who are caring for the sick. And we thank you for the army of researchers working steadily and quietly towards a cure. Give them skill clarity and unexpected breakthroughs today. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. And for those all grieving and reeling from the sudden loss of loved ones, may they find your fellowship in their suffering, your comfort in their loss and your hope in their despair. In a few short moments, we pray quietly for ourselves and bringing those people that we know who are in need of his love and mercy. And we name before you those known to us who are vulnerable and scared, the frail, the sick and the elderly. God of all comfort, you are powerful and you are merciful. The Lord is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in trouble, therefore we will not fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, gracious and glorious God, sovereign over all in heaven and on earth, forgive us as we have misused the resources that you gave us and destroyed and took for granted the beauty of your world. We pray for a world where people on our planet thrive. We pray for our leaders and all governments to take urgent action on climate change before it's too late. We pray for sustainable solutions, 
for a clear path to be forged, for unity among the countries and for all nations to keep their commitments to deep and transformative change on this issue. And Lord, we continue to pray and intercede in the name of Jesus Christ for our own political leaders and for our country as we navigate these uncertain times of pandemic, recession and withdrawal from the European Union. May your ears be attentive and your eyes open to hear our prayers for our leaders and for our future. And so to you, the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be glory and praise and honour today, tomorrow and evermore. Merciful Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
and that's such a great hymn isn't it it's one of those you could just continue to sing and sing and sing without end but our worship must come to an end this morning uh, so would you join with me as we pray together be with us lord as we go out into the world may the lips that have sung your praises always speak the truth may the ears that have heard your word listen only to what is good and may our lives as well as our worship be always pleasing in your sight help us to see know and worship you for the sake of our lord and savior jesus christ amen and so may the blessing of god almighty father son and holy spirit be upon you and remain with you and those whom you love and those whom you pray for this day and always amen just want to say thank you to uh, bishop wallace uh, for sharing uh, those thoughts with us this morning i want to say thank you to juliet and pauline uh, for taking part but also for richard for putting this together as seamless seamlessly as he always does um although we're not scheduled to uh, be back in church till the 6th of september uh, richard and i have decided that uh, we're going to trial a live stream uh, from church next sunday that's the 30th of august um, i'm going to be preaching we may have some live music with ben beth and annabelle uh, some pre-recorded music and we're just going to test uh, one or two things um, so that when we do it for real as it were on the 6th of september we can get everything right um, you're very welcome to come and join us one or two of you have registered already on the website um, if you're going to join us please do so please do that so we can uh, have an idea of numbers but also for test and trace purposes and of course um, the legislation is uh, that in churches people wear a mask uh, when they come to church uh, for the time being a reminder that this afternoon uh, Rob Halligan will be performing uh, in the rectory garden uh, from about four o'clock Ben, Beth and Annabelle are going to do about 30 minutes in support and uh, Rob will be playing two sets and the first set will be uh, his concept or part of his concept album Psalm uh, which is well worth uh, listening to um, you can bring a picnic uh, as I said doors at three uh, we finish at four and can I just say gentlemen uh, that we do expect to be finished promptly around seven-ish so that we can all get home to watch the Champions League final. Come on by in Munich. <laughs> Assuming they've got in there because they may not uh, if this was recorded uh, before the game. As always, just keep an eye on the, on the website, uh, on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, other things uh, just for updates on what's happening. Um, and we'll certainly get back to uh, putting a note a sheet out next Sunday as well. Um, and I think that's about it. We're just going to finish with a song uh, that was produced uh, for the Thy Kingdom Come prayer initiative uh, a few months ago. Uh, it's new words to a very familiar tune. And it's called the Thy Kingdom Come Anthem and it's sung by Pete James. I'm sure you will enjoy it. So, as I always say, uh, be safe and be blessed, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. kingdom come Lord teach us how to pray for all to know your joy your peace and love and know your friendship each and every day the breath of Christ the Father's gentle 
Yeah.